Hello there, welcome to the 21st video of learning everything we can learn from VisionOS documentation by Apple. Here, we're going to begin our Xcode and Instruments series. Here, we'll first start with diagnosing and resolving bugs in your In this app. article, diagnosing and resolving bugs in your running app will inspect your app to isolate bugs, locate crashes, identify excess system resource usage, visualize memory bugs, and investigate problems in its appearance. Unit testing determines whether your code delivers results that meets your expectations, but it doesn't explain the cause when it doesn't. To diagnose an error, attach the debugger, reproduce the error, and then narrow down its root cause by inspecting your variables at key points in your code. While the app is running with breakpoints, if you configure a scheme run action for debugging by using the debug execute checkbox in the info setting, the app will attach to the debugger automatically when the app uses the schema to attach the debugger to a process that is already running. Choose debug attach to process and select your app process from the list. Follow this, this same process to diagnose and resolve errors in your code, crashes, memory leaks, and Let's layout start problems. by looking at breakpoints. Breakpoints are these blue tags that you can put into code that you expect to run the code, and that would cause us to come back to a determine what's going on there in that piece of code. This is an init function, so we'll probably not be touching that anytime. Let's take a look at something that we would touch is playing. This is definitely going to be touched whenever we touch our playback controls. Let's turn on that breakpoint. Now go to your simulator and hit a button. As you can see immediately, once we hit this play button, it will give us a debug. As you can see, we have a hit and now we are in debugging mode and we are hitting the break. The second way of doing this is going up to debug, debug toolbar up above your screen. There is a debug um, in, in your toolbar. Now scroll down to attach to process and look for destination video. Scroll down all the way down, pass into the processes. Now this is your app name, destination video that we're running. And what we're doing here, it's already being debugged. That's the item that we want to click for this debug process. Now, how do we make breakpoints work? Well, we have to first run our schema in debug mode. Let's take a look at our destination video schema. If we look at the schema in the run and info tab, we see that the build configuration is for debugging. And this forces us to debug if we look at the second process, attached process, you'll see that our destination video is already attached to your debugger. Now, to find this target, if you are not running in debug mode, you will have to scroll down to processes here, systems. And then when you scroll down all the way to destination video, right here, this is your processee. And you hit that and you'll be running in debugger mode. Pause the app to inspect variables and isolate bugs. To fix a bug, you need, first need to understand what is causing it. To narrow down the cause of a bug, develop a set of steps to reliably reproduce it. Determine where the bug happens in your source code. Pause your app with a breakpoint in your source code before the point at which you believe the bug occurs. Look at your variables and confirm they have the values you expect. If they don't, begin again at step one. Step through your code and watch your variables change. Note where your variables have unexpected values. Analyze your code to determine a fix. After determining a potential fix for the bug, confirm the diagnosis by changing your code and retesting to reproduce it. If the change addresses the problem, you will resolve the bug. If you change does not resolve it, can reconsider where the bug might be occurring and repeat the steps to isolate and fix it. For more information on setting breakpoints and inspecting variables, see setting breakpoints to pause your running app and step through your code and inspect variables to isolate bugs. We'll be doing that in a little bit. Okay, let's resolve a simple bug. Let's go to our destination video app 
And let's pick up this bug that we've solved before. This is our inline view player. Once we hit this button, we expect this play button to disappear, but it does not disappear. So there must be a problem, a bug in the code. Now let's go into inline player view and there's an the inline control view. This so, uh, gives us the simple play, pause and replay button for our trailer player. There must be an issue here. So I expect when the player is playing, it should hit this function called dismiss after delay. Once it hits dismiss after delay, we will run, we'll set the is showing control to be false after three seconds of waiting. Thereby, is showing controls should become false and thereby giving us no image. However, there is no is showing control to be equal to, uh, to, to, to remove the image from our player. So I believe that we should do it dot opacity is showing control um, and we're going to do a one and a zero for opacity that will resolve our problem. Now this does dismiss after delay and we do have a false for is showing control. With that we should have this disappear but it does not. Now, as you can see, it's still staying there. Let's rerun the app now that we got the new updated code for opacity. Once we have updated the code for opacity, we can run this code one more time. And let's see what happens. Once we hit the play button, of course, the, it disappears. It's gone. That's the what opacity in effect, and we have solved the problem here. Back to the article, locate crashes, exceptions, and runtime issues. When your app experiences a crash, exception, or runtime issue, it can be challenging to pinpoint the code causing the problem because the stack trace for the crash doesn't always point to the line of code that causes the crash. Use the rubric below to identify the problem characteristics and then set the correct type of breakpoint. A crash that stops at main or highlights app delegates is frequently an Objective C obsession, exception. A crash that is the result of a runtime issue also stops at main or highlights app delegate and may have a message similar to thread 8 execution bad instruction code code equals to. A crash that stops at an uncaught or unhandled swift error displays a fatal error message and indicates a swift error. Add a breakpoint to your code in location based on problem characteristics. Then, when your app stops at the breakpoint, check the state of the code execution. For example, for more information on setting breakpoints and identifying crashes, see setting breakpoints to pause your running app and identify the cause of common crashes. Your Swift code can receive an Objective-C obsession when it uses code from a module that uses Objective-C. Now, let's take a look at one of these runtime errors. Here we have place Q and we have just lost connection with our app. Let's take a look at this. Unable to present immersive space for ID Q mesh interaction error domain FB workshop FBS workshop the error domain code one seen invalidated before create completion. User info BS error code description equals invalid scene. NS notified failed reason equals seen invalidated before create completion. I believe this means that we were unable to create a mesh for the scene because it's not a valid scene, given that this is a simulator. Inspect variables and execution sequences without pausing. When you develop code, it helps to log actions and variable values so you understand how code runs and what values your variables have at different points in your app. This is especially true when you develop concurrent code or code that executes simultaneously across multiple queries or threads. Because bugs can intermittently and difficult to reproduce, often you reproduce a bug in normal execution but not when you're stepping through the debugger. But because the timing is different between normal execution and debugging, the debugger provides tools to inspect variables without pausing and disturbing the timing of your concurrent code. Developers commonly add print or NS log statements to see variable values. While this technique 
works, it adds extra code that isn't useful after you finish development and leaves your app with a noisy console that makes diagnosing subsequent bugs more difficult. Instead, use breakpoint actions to know when actions in your app takes place and inspect variable values without pausing. To determine whether your code executes with minimal effect to timing, use a breakpoint action to play a sound and continue executing. If your debugger reaches the breakpoint when you run the app, it plays the sound and confirms execution. To log a variable value to the console without pausing, add a breakpoint with a debugger command action using PO to print out the evaluation of an object or V to print out the value of a variable to the console. Select the automatically continue with evaluating action option for breakpoints to prevent pausing. Here is an example. We'll see this in code in a little bit. To log custom text to the console, add context to variable values and add a breakpoint with a log message action. Specify that your custom text and include expressions, the breakpoint name, and the breakpoint hit count to provide more information. Because PO compiles code dynamically to evaluate expressions, it takes more time to evaluate your variable and log it to the console to reduce timing into issues. Use V to log variable values instead. Use other breakpoint actions to execute an Apple script or a shell script or to capture G GPU frame. For more information or on inspecting variables, see setting breakpoints to pause your running app and stepping through your code and inspecting variables to isolate bugs. All right, let's take a look at the automatic breakpoint. We're gonna do an automatic breakpoint on dismiss after delay. Start by clicking edit breakpoint. Once you hit the edit breakpoint, give it a name, give it an action, and write in the command. For us, we did a printout of the issue controls. Then hit the automatic con continue after evaluation action option. Once you hit that, we're ready to go. Let's go to our simulator and hit that button a couple times. Now, once we hit the play button, what happens is that the delay uh, function should work. And thereby, we will scroll down and we have a couple of these. We have the status is now true, the status is now false. That gives us information about what is going on once we are in the dismiss after delay button. Identify potential overuse of CPU and memory. An easily overlooked and common problem in development and testing is the overuse of CPU and memory. Xcode's debugger provides gauges in the debugger navigator to help investigate potential problems. Monitor the gauges while you're testing the, your app to uncover unusual usage. Click a gauge for more detailed view. Here's our debugger demo. Here's what's going on in our view. The CPU gauge shows the amount of CPU the app requires to process instructions over time. When your app is drawing the user interface, processing data it retrieves from the network or performing calculations, it's normal to see the CPU usage increase to a fairly high number for a short period of time. When those tasks are complete and your app is idle and waiting for the user to perform an action, CPU usage should be zero or very low. Do additional analysis if CPU usage is persistent at a level above zero when the app appears to be idle. Over 100% for more than very short periods of time, very high, and you'll see hitches in your user interface. For more information on improving performance, see Improving Your App Performance article. The memory gauge show how much memory your app uses over time. It starts at a fairly small number, less than 10 megabytes when you first launch your app, and it increases as people navigate through your user interface. It may also increase if you fetch, process, and store data from the network and perform complex calculations. It then decreases when the processes, processing is complete. Watch the gauge as you navigate through your app and note when memory usage goes up and down. Memory usage increases when you present model views or add a view to a navigation controller and decrease when you diminish or navigate away from those views. If your usage continues to increase and doesn't ever decrease, investigate whether you have a memory leak or abandoned memory. For more information on reducing memory use, 
and resolving memory leaks, see the section below, visualize and diagnose increased memory usage and reducing your app memory use. We will look at those articles when we need to, but let's take a look at this debugger. Here we have our debugger and here is our destination video. We are constantly using a 7% and we have a constant memory of 126. Let's use some of those cues and see what we can do to reduce the CPU usage and memory usage. Once we remove the video, as you can see, we have decreased the CPU usage down to 5 or 6% and memory usage 95%. I think this is the bare minimum of memory usage. Let's see what happens if, let, let's say, we move down, we hit the beach again. This should increase the memory usage and also the CPU usage as before. Now, if, let's say, we play the video, we get an even bigger usage and a huge CPU increase. But once the video has appeared, our CPU usage has gone back down to 21%. Our memory usage is what, 140, 150? And more and more as we gather more and more data for this particular video. Once we've completed the video, once we reach the end of the video, it looks like nothing much has changed, but the CPU has gone down because we no longer play video. Let's move back and see what's going on. There, we have removed a bunch of memory from usage, and by removing the screen, we are reducing our memory usage further, and therefore, we don't have a memory leak. We're doing pretty good. Detect high disuse access and network use. Be aware of issues resulting from frequent access to resources on this or over the network. You can monitor these resources using the gauge and Xcode's debugger as well. The disk I.O. gauge shows you how much data your app reads and writes to it from this over time. The gauge shows if store data that the user generates in your app, store data in user preferences, fetch data from the network and store it, read data from your app bundle or app directories. Storing and reading data frequently from this uses more power than doing so from memory, and it adds wear and tear to the user's device. To know whether the usage is unusual, you need to understand the size of data you're storing and reading, and comparing that, compare that to what you observe in the gauge. For example, if you download and store a 5 megabyte graphic file to, for display in a view that you use frequently and it writes over 50 megabytes of data, investigate whether the remote image changes frequently or whether you need to configure networking to prevent re-downloading the same image. If you're reading more data from the disk than you expect, investigate whether a memory cache solution might help or whether you initiated a data read from the wrong point in your app or view lifecycle. Read or unread it too often. For more information on reducing this writes, see reducing this writes article. The network IO gauge shows how much data your app reads and writes from the internet, uh, the network over time. If your app only uses local resources, your app may not read or write any data from the network. Communicating data over the network uses energy and reduces that device's battery life, so minimize data transfer whenever possible. To understand your app network usage, watch the network I.O. gauge when your app is re sending or receiving data from the network. For example, if you're implementing a cache system for downloading images and your network usage increases when accessing them, confirm that your cache settings are correct in the app and on the server. If you're uploading user-generated content and frequently upload failures during poor network conditions lead to high network use, implement a system to recover and restart failed uploads at the point of failure rather than re-uploading the entire file. All right, let's click the video by the lake. And let's see our network jump. Let's play the video. As you can see, our network now has gone from zero to two megabytes. And I guess we finished downloading the video that quickly. Once we've downloaded, let's take a look at the stats. We spent about four megabytes receiving the video and our disk usage is 7.8. It is looking very normal out here. Visualize and diagnose increasing memory usage. Diagnose the cause of memory leaks and abandon memory with the memory graph. The observable symptom of a memory leak is memory usage that continues to increase over time, even when conditions in the app indicates that memory usage is decreasing. A memory leak can occur in a retain cycle, which is when objects maintain strong references to each other, but the app no longer references them. These objects remain in memory and the app can't remove them. 
Abandoned memory occurs when you create objects and your code still references them, but your app no longer needs them or uses them. Here is the debug memory graph button. To see the memory graph in the debugger, pause your app at a breakpoint and click the debug memory graph button in the debug bar. Alternatively, click the debug memory graph button when the app is running to pause the app and show the memory graph. The memory graph view replaces the stack trace in debug navigator with a list of types organized by libraries, each with a list of instances called nodes. Select the node to view its memory graph. A node's memory graph shows all the memory references to that node and highlights its strong references. Control click any node in the graph to perform and more actions, such as accessing Quick Look or printing the description to the console. Choose Focus on Node to show the graph for the selected node. Click the reference to see its details, including the name or variable of the variable and the type of reference and the source and destination object in memory. Here is a weak reference, here is a strong reference, here's the reference object, here's the selected node. To resolve a memory leak for a retain cycle, observe the memory gauge when you navigate the app. Note when memory usage increases when your app instantiates an object but does not decrease but when you expect the system to deallocate the object. Examine the memory graph to see if there are any unexpected ways of memory, number of instances of objects, and inappropriate strong references to it. If there is a strong reference to the object, control click the node and with the strong reference and choose focus on the node to view the goods graph. If the node ha also has a strong reference from the object, this is a retain cycle. Resolve the retain cycle by changing one side of the relationship to use a weak declaration for a reference to the other object and remove the reference altogether by removing any dependencies on the other object. Retest to confirm that changes fixes the issue. To reserve abandoned memory issues, identify the time in your app lifecycle that it no longer needs that the abandoned object and remove any references to it. Let's take a look. Here is the memory debugger button. We're building a memory graph. Let's take a look at what we're getting from this graph shortly. According to this graph, our player model does not have any strong reference uh, retain cycle at all. There are no pointers back, strong reference pointers back to the player model, no, but only strong reference pointer pointing forward, as you can see with the bold lines to strong reference pointer and weak lines pointing the other opposite direction to, towards the, these particular objects. Lastly, inspect and resolve appearance and layout issues. Some issues in the appearance or layout of your app only appears when you configure the system with a particular interface style, dynamic type si text size, or when your app uses particular accessibility features. Use environmental overrides when targeting iOS, macOS, and tvOS apps to test your interface in these environments. To understand issues that involve the position and si or size of your view, you might need to inspect them with the context of views in other layers. Use the view debugger when targeting iOS, macOS, tvOS, and watchOS apps, which displays a 3D representation of the view hierarchy in layers. To help diagnose these issues, entities within a visionOS app and their surrounding sometimes interact with each other in ways you don't expect. Enable the visualizations to re uh, represent coordinate access, bounding boxes, and other information that is normally invisible to help understand these inter interactions. For more information on using these features to debug the appearance of your app, see Diagnose Issues in the Appearance of Running Apps. Now let's click that Visualization button. It's right next to the Memory Debugger. Here, here is the Debug visualization, uh, Visualizations. You can click the Bounds and Collision Shape and Access. And we can take a look at what's going on here in our simulator. As you can see, there are interaction spots, there are layers, and let's flip it around. Let's see what's going on here. Let's rotate. And there are pointers, access, and layers, and bounds for all of these objects. This is how we can view our objects with all the necessary tools. With that, we have come to the end of this article. I hope you learned a lot. And I'm looking forward to the next article where we can use more of these skills in more apps.